Dios en el Jeff Buckley's phone and his mother gave it to me after he passed away. And I took the very first acoustic show I ever did, I was terrified because it was terrifying at first. And I wanted something from home and I just grabbed that as I was running out the door and uh, had it next to me and the show was great and it started this whole thing and, and so I have it with me now all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys discussed Either surprise or on purpose. Yeah. Either both Chester and I discussed dancing. it, doing like, you know, t picking some songs and like, you know, actually just going up and, yeah, I'd be into that. I'd be into, yeah, um, anytime anybody wants to do something with me or vice versa, or performing. I think that's what makes these types of tours work better. Yeah! This is also an audio song. Oh my God. Yeah. Like about four other walks, it was a minor land with the This is the way it's not um, this is this is a song that was written for uh and about the hurricane tree and and the disaster and and uh the, the survivors, the families, the like victims. Um and it was it was critical, but in in the movie, in the Michael Mann film, it, it happens to be Miami Voice. In, in Miami Voice there's a scene where they're fucking some people. <laughs> I don't remember who was in it. I saw that long scene and everything. I thought, okay, that's weird. That's why I don't like movies. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's get a rant to some more political song and put it where they're fucking intentionally awesome. I don't even want to move to do well. But, um, My band and, and a lot of bands that my friends are in are getting international attention. Uh, I, I got this feeling of um, 
it looks like everyone feels like it'll be like this forever. And just looking into, not very far back into the history of rock music, it's clear like, okay, these kind of scenes never last forever. So my, my thought was, you know, not, not really worrying about what happens other than just thinking about trying to write music that inspires me and, and be a musician. And forget about like any connection or disconnection or what happens, but just focus on that. Mm -hmm. what happens, but just focus on that. Mm -hmm. Where were you and how did you find out that Kurt Cobain died? I, I was actually in Paris on tour with uh, Soundgarden doing a tour uh, with Tad opening up the band Tad, so pretty much all of us knew, knew him. Mm -hmm. So I was in a room with 12 people that, that were first of all friends with him. Surprised or not surprised? Uh, not 100%, because he had had like an episode about three months earlier, with, which it was unclear what, what happened, but he, he had like been rushed to the hospital, I think it was in Spain, and people were saying that he had had an intentional overdose, you know, and it was speculation and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. You know it, wasn't the, it wasn't the first person that I was, uh, that I was friends with or a fan of um, that was brilliant that had died young for me. So um, it, was, it was a tragedy, though, nonetheless, you know, and, and one, of those, one of those things where I don't even know to this day how to, how to deal with it or talk about it in a way that, you know, I can't put a positive spin on it. Yeah, Because you know. there isn't one. I guess I can laugh about it, but I can't put a positive spin on it. You know, there's nothing good about it. Um, I'm, I'm just glad that he was around long enough that people got to, uh, to know who he was so they can listen to his music. It's 96 Rock and we're talking to Chris Cornett. And it meant an alternative to anything that's on the radio, which was like commercial metal and Billy Joel. And uh, so it, there were no rules. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, you kind of had this REM moment and then this idea that alternative had to be um, somewhat androgynous. Uh, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't be in any way aggressive. Um, it was jangly. Uh, if you were, you know, a guitar band, sort of couldn't have keyboards. You couldn't d have a trumpet. You couldn't do anything except for this this rigid sort of uh, template. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to smash that. That didn't make any sense. You know, how did we? How did this whole this whole generation of bands and musicians that came from a free for all of post punk indie immediately corner themselves in this attitude of we can only do five things and and the Pixies seem to be like the best version of that, so why bother? You know, they're that, the best version already exists. I was telling my wife uh, last week, the, just reflecting on the weirdness of that period, because the, the fact that I shaved my head showed up in a blurb in the entertainment part of Time magazine. And I remember being disturbed by that. I remember being disturbed by that, thinking, people really rely on this for important international news and, and uh, Th that's strange, I, you know, is that the best we could do? You know, all, all of our lives being musicians and, and songwriters and killing ourselves to create this and, and all they're writing about is, is who did what with their hair. But it also made me glad that I did it. It's like, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I didn't want to march to anyone's drummer. I don't think Soundgarden really was ever capable of it. No, everyone was against that attitude from the very beginning. Um, and I think what happens is a lot of times in popular culture, bands start out that way, but if they become successful, they don't really have anything to fight against anymore. Musicians are mostly nerdy guys that weren't good at sports or um, were, were socially awkward somehow and ended up in a bedroom listening to records and playing an instrument. And uh, sometimes when you're accepted, uh, that edge goes away. But other times when you're accepted, there's a conflict. And the conflict is, oh, why now? 
you know, you didn't like me then, mm -hmm. so now, uh, you know, my FUs are going to get bigger. And I think that, that Soundgarden was sort of one of those. To my friends and my loved ones, I believe.